The next thing to talk, to talk about from the amines chapter are reactions that involve benzene. So, um, let's start with the general thing. First of all, how do we get nitrogen onto a benzene in the first place? Well, we have one go-to reaction for that. And this is from the first exam. HNO3 with H2SO4. And what this does is it adds an NO2 to the benzene ring. So we have an NO2 added to the benzene ring. Since there's no directing group, it doesn't really matter where I put it yet, but it'll matter later when I have that. Anyway, let's draw out what NO2 looks like. Double bond O, O minus. This is what NO2 will look like, N positive. Okay? And remember, NO2 is a very strong electron withdrawing group. That'll be relevant in a little bit. Okay? Now, what are we going to do to that NO2? Because we can actually now have some reactions with it. Well, one thing, what will usually happen is we're going to reduce it to NH2. We're going to turn that into an NH2. So we need a reducing agent, and we have quite a number of reactions that can actually do this, so I'm going to list them all out. One reaction you'll see a lot is Fe, comma, OH minus, step one, step two I believe is water. If you see F, iron, and OH minus, you know it's this reaction in the context of NO2. That's one possibility. Or you could use H2 with nickel or catalyst or however they want to write it. That's another possibility. Third possibility, LIALH4. Those are the three most common you're going to run into. One of those three will be used over the arrow, and it's your choice to choose which one you want. I recommend using this one because this is specific to the NO2, um, and that will reduce it to an NH2. Now, why do we want NH2? Well, there are a couple reasons. First of all, NO2 is withdrawing group, so it directs meta. NH2, excuse me, NH2 is a electron donating group. It directs ortho para. But there's a technicality why NH2 is not something you want to have directing, and we'll talk about that in an example we do in a couple minutes. Now, the other thing, the other advantage of having NH2 is what we can turn it into. We can turn that NH2 into something that's called N2 positive. Or not really called, it's just written N2 positive. And what N2 positive looks like is N triple bond N positive. And we saw before that N, N2 positive is a really good leaving group. And that really good leaving group can be replaced by a large number of things. So this is straight out of the textbook, and it's in your lecture slides. Try and find the slide. It's something that's pretty handy to have on your note card if it's not on your cover sheet. Here are all the things that N2 positive can be replaced with on a benzene ring. Okay? So one reaction could be H2O over the arrow, and that will replace the N2 positive with an OH. If you see copper, Cu, attached to something, whatever that copper is attached to will replace that N2. So for example, CuBr will replace, re, will replace the N2 with bromine. CuCl will replace it with chlorine. Then we have also CuCn. And if you couldn't guess, that N2 will be replaced by C triple bond N. Okay, I'm running out of space, so I'm going to draw more over here more things that we can turn N2 positive into. We can turn it into an iodine by using Ki over the arrow. So N2 positive will be replaced by an iodine. And then we have two more after that. So let's do this. Ki will replace the N2 with iodine. HBF4 replaces the N2 with a fluorine. And finally, the last one, the weird one, H3PO4, I think. Yep, H3PO4. That will, will replace the N2 with just a hydrogen. So we've got seven different reactions, seven different things we can turn N2 positive in. So for example here, if I wanted to turn this N2 positive and just turn it back into a benzene, I'd use H3PO4, because all that does is add a hydrogen, and I'd end up getting back to the benzene. 
because I added a hydrogen here, I don't have to draw it. It's just benzene. Okay? So that's the general gist of what the synthesis involving benzene will be on your exam. Somehow turning something into N2 positive and replacing it. Now let's go through a couple extra rules. And to do that, we're going to go through the synthesis that you had to do on your workshop. So they told you They told you to start with a benzene with a methyl on it and turn it into a benzene with a methyl on it. And what was it over here? It was, oh gosh, I can't remember. Oh, fluorine, fluorine. Turn it into fluorine and add a bromine here. Okay? They wanted you to do this synthesis. So let's go through each individual piece and figure out what we need to do. First of all, fluorine. We've never learned a way to add fluorine directly to the benzene. The only way we've seen how to add fluorine is through that long process I just drew out. Start from NO2, convert NO2 into NH2, convert NH2 into N2 positive, and then convert N2 positive into fluorine with HBF4. And I also realized I forgot to write it, but the way you convert NH2 into N2 positive, there are two things that could be over the arrow, they both do the same thing. One is H-O-N-O, HONO. The other possibility thing, the other possible thing you could use is N-A-N-O-2 with H+. What that H plus from, uh, comes from can vary, it can be HCl or HCO positive, but all you need to know is N-A-N-O-2 with H plus, whatever the source, is the way you make HONO, and then it will turn NH2 into N2 plus. Okay? And then we also need to add a bromine. A bromine is just added by either that N2 positive route or much simpler, Br2 with FeBr3. But we also have to take into consideration the order of events we need to uh, do this in. We have CH3. CH3 is a weak electron donating group and therefore it is an ortho para director, which means it's going to preferentially either direct ortho here or para here. And remember our rule, if both ortho and para positions are available, always add para first because it is the more stable position, less steric hindrance and all that nonsense. So we need to add something here first. And the thing we want to add there is what will eventually become the fluorine. So your first reaction that you want to do is HNO3, H2SO4. You can't add the bromine yet because you want to add it here, the meta position, and this does not direct meta. So now we have CH3, we have our benzene, and we have an NO2 down here. Okay? Now, let's think, can we add the bromine now? Well, CH3 is still an ortho para director, so it would want to direct here or here. NO2 is a strong withdrawing group, which means it is a meta director, which means one, two, three, it would also direct to those positions. So we still don't have a way of getting a bromine in the position we want. So don't add the bromine yet. Let's go through the next step. Let's turn that NO2 into NH2 using FeOH minus and then some H2O step two. Okay, now we have the CH3, we have the benzene, and now we have NH2. Now let's stop and think about this again. We have two different directing groups, CH3, which we said directs ortho, and NH2, which, what is that? NH2 is a very, very strong electron donating group. So it would look to direct ortho and para here or here. Para positions blocked by the CH3, but the ortho positions are available. So maybe now we can add the bromine. Remember the fact that a strong donating group will direct over a weak directing group, meaning NH2 will win if you have to compete between this, the, the carbon and the nitrogen for who directs. But here's the thing, nitrogen is such a powerful donating group that he won't just add that bromine once. He's gonna keep adding until there's no spots left, which means we can't actually add the bromine yet. If I did, if I did that Br2 FeBr3, at the very least, I would expect to get both those ortho positions filled by the NO2. And quite frankly, or sorry, the NH2. 
And quite frankly, these two spots might get filled as well, but we don't want that. So how can we make nitrogen still a stronger directing group than the CH3, but not as strong as it is by being just NH2? The way we do this is by turning that NH2 into an amide. And so think back to our reactions of how to make amides from one of the first videos I did. We have two options. We can either do carboxylic acid with DCC, or you can use a carbonyl with a good leaving group on it, like chlorine. Okay? Either of these will work. And all you're doing is you're taking this nitrogen right here and replacing either the OH group or the chlorine. So you have CH3, the benzene ring. The nitrogen is still attached there, and that nitrogen is now connected to the carbonyl. So carbon, double bond O, and let's just say that was a methyl, so methyl right there. Okay? So now we have an amide. Amides are still fairly good donating groups as long as the nitrogen is attached to the benzene ring, but it's nowhere near as strong as an NH2. In the NH2, there's nowhere for these lone pairs to go but down into the ring. Here, the lone pairs of that nitrogen can either swing up to the oxygen or into the ring. Since it has both options, it's not as good as, it's not as focused, right? It can't shoot the electron, it can't, um, it has to go one way or the other, and since it's trying to share between the two, there's less to put into one spot. Okay? So now this nitrogen will direct ortho para. Para position is blocked, so it has to add ortho. Now we use the Br2. Would that be Br3? And that will give us the bromine in the ortho position to the nitrogen, and technically the meta position to this methyl, but the methyl isn't the thing that's doing the directing, because it's not as strong as the nitrogen in terms of who directs. So now we have the amide, we have the bromine added where we want it to be added. And we're almost done. But first things first, we want to turn this nitrogen into a fluorine, right? We can't do that unless it's N2 positive. So we need to turn this back, we need to turn this into N2 positive. There's no way of doing that directly. We need to turn it into NH2 first. But that's the nice thing about using this, this uh, amide thing. The amide is easily removable. And the way you do that is either by using H3O plus, or you could use OH minus. Either of these two will end up kicking out that carbonyl as a carboxylic acid and leaving behind an NH2. So now with this, we're back to our ring, our, our CH3, our benzene. Once again, we have the NH2 in this position here, and we have the bromine added. Now we need to turn that NH2 into the fluorine, so first what you do is you convert that to N2 positive using HONO, or NaNO2 with HCl or H, any source of H+. And now I have CH3, I have my benzene, I have my bromine, and I have my N2 positive. So one step to go. I just need to use the reaction that replaces N2 positive with fluorine, and that is HCF4. I believe heat is also involved, but if you see HDF4, you know what you're doing. The heat is less important here. Okay, so that's the general gist of this synthesis. Always keep in mind who directs where, the order of events, and remember the very important fact that NH2 is such a powerful donating group, such a powerful director, that it adds a lot to the benzene. It doesn't stop at one thing. So you have to, absolutely have to, turn it into an amide if you want to add other groups before turning it into the NH2 or the, the uh, N2 positive, okay? And so that's the general idea of chapter 20, benzene syntheses.